just start with um, some slides and do basic kind of anatomy and just show you where we're going to be working today. Um, so my name is Maria Fernandez and we're going to be doing uh, self massage for carpal tunnel syndrome. So uh, what carpal tunnel syndrome is, it's when the uh, finger flexors create swelling in the carpal tunnel area, which is a compartment in your wrist. And then this can press on the nerve, which uh, will bring tingling or numbness into the thumb, index finger, and the middle finger. And then one of uh, the ways that we can tell that this is happening is through a test called uh, failings test, which we're all gonna do right now. Um, so you're going to bring your uh, wrist together like this, and we're gonna hold it like this for about a minute. And I'll go ahead and time. And if at any time somebody, someone's feeling numbness or tingling into their uh, fingers, you can go ahead and relax your hands and that would indicate that it's a positive sign for this um, condition. And so all these techniques that we're going to be doing will be very, very helpful for you. Um, so the nerve can get entrapped in different places. And one of those is right in the middle of the wrist. And we'll just go a few more seconds here. And good, go ahead and relax and you can kind of shake out your wrists. Um, you could put in the chat if, if you're comfortable with sharing, if anyone uh, felt any sensations into their fingers, into their wrists, or if anyone is having any numbness or tingling in their elbow, shoulder, wrist, or hand. It kind of stung a little bit. It's not sure if you'll feel tingling in your fingers. Yeah, so if you are feeling tingling, then that means that there's some type of nerve, um, nerve entrapment going on. So if you felt it in one side more than the other, um, start with that side first. I am gonna lead you through both sides, um, but we'll just go one at a time. And so to do some anatomy here, these are the forearm flexors. So this is the inside of your arm. This is the elbow that is closest to your body. And these are the muscles that can get tight. And then the muscles turn into tendons and these tendons go all the way and attach um, to the base of our fingers. And this is the area where the uh, carpal tunnel syndrome can, um, can happen. So these tendons can become inflamed and then um, push on that nerve. So here we have a um, picture of the nerve and um, the median nerve travels the length of the arm and it can get actually entrapped in two places. One is right here. Um, this is called the pronator teres muscle and it kind of sandwiches that the nerve. So when this muscle becomes tight, it can get entrapped here. And then the other place of entrapment, like I said, is right here at the wrist. And um, we'll be focusing on both of those areas. And then this is the ulnar nerve. So this is the nerve that is um, on the inside of your body. And when you hit your funny bone, when you get that like tingling sensation all the way down, this is the nerve that gets uh, affected. So this nerve can also become entrapped. And um, if it's more the ulnar nerve that's becoming entrapped, you'll feel it in your pinky and ring finger. So here's a little cross section of what our hands look like on the inside. 
And um, you'll see the bones, kind of those big round structures here. And then right in there is the carpal tunnel. Um, so you'll see the tendons, the white um, circles, and then the yellow one is the nerve. So what actually happens when we move our hands and our fingers, um, this nerve will kind of roll around the different tendons. Um, so it's very fluid and mobile. Um, but if there is some type of situation happening uh, with, within the tendons, it can become entrapped. And here we'll see the nerve as, as it goes down into the fingers. So that median nerve affects the thumb, the index finger, um, the middle finger, and a little bit of the ring finger. And then on the other side, um, this is the ulnar nerve. It goes into the pinky and the ring finger. And for our, the technique that we'll be doing, um, we're gonna be working on this uh, ligament structure called the flat flexor retinaculum, which also gets tight and can push can put compression on the nerve. Um, so the structures that um, I want you to be aware of are these two bony landmarks here, um, the pisiform bone and the hamate, they're bones of the wrist. And then on the other side, the um, tubercle of the trapezium. And those will be the um, three bony landmarks that we'll use to help release this uh, ligament here. All right, does anyone have any questions at this moment? Great, we'll go ahead and um, get into the um, strokes. So if you have a pillow to put in your lap, that would be really helpful. Or if you just have um, your desk, you can rest your hand on your desk. Uh, you want to be comfortable as you're doing these to yourself. Um, if you have somebody in the room and you guys were feel comfortable working on each other, you can actually do it for each other. I'm gonna run through it twice. Um, so that could also be an option. Um, and yeah, just stay, try to stay as relaxed as possible as you are doing these self-massage techniques. So um, relaxing your shoulders and trying to keep your arm relaxed. So we will first work on um, the outside of our arms and I'm gonna just get my camera here ready. All right, so we're gonna find our, the bony part of our elbow right here, and we're gonna work these muscle, these extensor muscles. So when our muscles become tight, they tend to wind in towards the body. So we're going to unwind the muscle fibers back to normal alignment. And so with this, we're going to kind of be, um, like it's, it's kind of a scooping motion down towards the ground here with your fingers. You're going uh, yeah, pinky side. And then we can also get some arm movement. So the working arm, and you can use your fingers, you can use your thumb, whatever is most comfortable. And this arm, your thumb is going to be rotating towards you. This hand is going to be as relaxed as possible. And we're just going to unwind those tissues. And you can give as much pressure that feels comfortable. If you find a place that's really um, thick or tight, you can go back and forth to do a little bit of more um, kind of focused work on that area. And then we'll go again, just going down the forearm. My uh, working hand, this hand is rotating towards me. My thumb's rotating towards me and my fingers are going down towards the floor. And we'll just do that one, one more time, going down. Okay. 
go all the way to the wrist. And then we'll work the um, forearm flexors. So first I'm gonna do a stretch here with you guys. So you're gonna bring your arm out straight in front of you. Your fingers are towards you. And then you're going to bring your fingers towards your body. And you should feel this stretch on the inside of your arm. And we'll hold that for about five seconds. And then we'll relax and we'll go the other direction here, bringing your fingers towards your body. And we'll do again, fingers towards your body. And one more time. Good, and then relax. And so now we'll do the forearm flexors. Um, so with this one, you're going to be bringing the um, muscle tissue uh, kind of in towards your body. And then the rotation is going to be thumb towards the outside of your body. So here, unwinding the tight tissue, releasing any tightness or adhesions. Sometimes there can be more tightness where the tendons attach into the bone. So you can spend a little bit more time there. And then unwinding, making sure your shoulders are relaxed as you're doing this technique. You don't wanna be causing any other uh, tension in your body as you're trying to relax. <laughs> And then we'll go one more time. Good. And then we'll uh, do some uh, techniques for this wrist area. So that median nerve travels right here, right through that carpal tunnel and that flexor retinaculum sits right on top of it. So we'll be doing uh, this next technique to help broaden the fibers of that flex flexor retinaculum. Um, I'm gonna show you like this first and then I'll move my hand this way. So you're going to be flexing your hand and then moving your thumb out towards your pinky flexing your hand, moving your thumb out. So you're keeping your hand relaxed, flexing, moving your thumb out, creating space for that nerve. So when we're working on this side, we're also affecting that ulnar nerve that um, comes around the inside of your hand and arm. And then we'll be doing the other side. So your thumb side, and you're gonna flex and broaden that tissue. So I'll do it here. With my thumb, broadening the tissue. Good. So then we'll work on the muscles first and the ligaments, and then we'll go back to specific where that carpal tunnel gets, um, where that median nerve gets entrapped. So we're gonna do first this muscle here on the side of your thumb, your thenar pad. And so what happens with these muscles, they tend to kind of get short and tight and go inward. So we're going to unwind them out. And again, you can use your thumb, you can use your fingers. Your fingers are bringing the tissue back towards your wrist. Good. And then we'll do the pinky side. So we're going to be bringing the tissues back towards the wrist and the side of the hand. And I like to do it just to have a little bit of movement on the side that I'm working on because it just helps 
to unwind the tissue. Um, in my hand, I feel a little kind of crunchiness going on right here. Um, I use my hands a lot in my work, so this is really good for me to do. And then we'll go into the muscles of the hands. So we're going to be working in between each bone. And it's just going to be kind of up and back, back and forth, and then you can go up and down. And I'm squeezing on both sides as I go up. And then we'll go to the next one and you're working in between the bones. And these muscles are little, they do so much little fine detail work. I call their lumbricals. So it's good to love up on these. And this last one in between the pinky and the ring finger. And then we'll do the, um, the tendons. So we're gonna be working um, right along the bone. So you're gonna just follow the bone up to your finger. And these strokes are going to be going um, pinky side to thumb side. So as I follow that bone, go all the way up to its attachment. And down here is just a lot more comfortable to do work because I can relax my shoulder. <laughs> and then we'll just go ahead and do that last pinky side. And the thumb. Good. So now we'll do uh, that uh, flexor retinaculum where it attaches onto those uh, bony landmarks. So if you um, find your thumb, you can find your thumb joint where your thumb moves around. And, um, and then you'll find a kind of a bone poking out. And so that we're gonna be working on the palm side of where that bone is. And it's just going to be uh, up and down movement. So that uh, ligament is attaching right onto that bone. And then you're gonna move up just a touch, like a two centimeters. And you'll feel another bone poking out and you're gonna go up and down on that bone. And so if you feel any uh, tingling going into your fingers at this point, this work is indicated that this will be good for you, but you don't wanna spend too much time here. And then we'll go ahead and go to the other side, your pinky side, you'll feel a bone sticking out. And we're going to be working on the palm side of that bone. Just rubbing up and down. And again, you can have your hand relaxed. Good. And then you can just kind of uh, do a little uh, kind of squeeze up into the fingers. And we'll do a thing, it's called nerve flossing. So our nerves travel through this um, uh, sheath that kind of connects, or it, it's like a tube that the nerve goes through. And sometimes there can be uh, adhesions along that sheath. So this nerve flossing exercise is really good to help create mobility um, of the of the nerves and the pathway that the nerve passes through. So you're going to bring your arm out to the side 
your hand flex towards you. And then you're going to um, point your hand down and tilt your head to the opposite side. And then again, up, and then tilt your head to the opposite side. If you're feeling like you want a, more of a stretch, you can bring your arm towards uh, the back. And then when you go down, your chin goes towards opposite shoulder. So we'll just do that a few times. And this helps to glide the nerve in its proper pathway. We'll do one more time. Good. And then go ahead and just shake everything out. Ah, all right, so we'll go ahead and um, good, you guys are feeling it. Good, excellent. We'll go ahead and do the other side. Um, so we will start um, with the stretch first. So you can bring your arm in front of you. Your fingers are going towards your um, body. And then you can flex your fingers are uh, going towards your body. And we'll do that a couple of times. And this just helps to lengthen the muscles and the tissues of our forearm, kind of prep the uh, muscles before we work on it. And then we'll start with the um, extensor. So th this part of the arm, you can find your bony landmark on your elbow. And we're going to be um, bringing the tissue down towards the floor and we can uh, rotate the arm that we're working on thumb towards us. So keeping our bodies relaxed, our hands that we just worked on relaxed as much as possible. And um, if we find a place that's tight or maybe thick, sometimes it can even feel ropey um, or like a steel cable if it's really tight. You can spend a little bit more time there unwinding the tissues. And go all the way down to the wrist. And you want to cover the entire, um, all the muscles of your forearms. So I kind of, I do a line here and then I go down about a half inch and do another line and then go down about another half inch and do another line. Um, just so that all the muscles are getting attention. And like I said, if you find a place that needs a little more work, you could just spend a little bit more time there. Good. And then we'll go to the forearm flexor. So here you'll find the bony landmark on your elbow. And then you can use your thumb. Your hand is rotating towards you and the thumb or fingers are going um, outwards. So this is another area that that um, median nerve can get entrapped. It's called your pronator teres. And if you feel any numbness or tingling sensation in that area, that um, 
indicates that that's a place that should be worked on. Everything that we do should be not uh, pain-free. Um, so if anything's super painful, just be really gentle with yourself um, and don't work in that area for too long. So I'm just keeping my working hand nice and relaxed. This hand that I'm working on is doing most of the movement, um, but it's also staying relaxed as it moves. Good, and then we'll go uh, to that flexor retinaculum, broadening the um, fibers. So where you bend your wrist and then flex it. Here, and then do it on the pillow where it's more comfortable. Um, here you can also feel if there's any little crunching going on and you're trying to just smooth out where that crunching is happening. And then we can go ahead and do the other side. your thumb side. Good. And then we'll do these muscles here, your thenar and hypothenar eminences. And you're bringing the tissue towards your thumb. unwinding any tightness that you may feel, any tenderness. Good. And then we'll do the other side. So the pinky side here, and we're bringing the tissue down towards our wrist and side of the hand. Good. And then we'll do the muscles that are in between each of our fingers. And again, here you can kind of squeeze on the front and the back of your um, palm and hand and just go up and down. And here this middle one. I'm gonna switch switch ways of showing. <laughs> and remember you can just be whatever is comfortable for your hands. In between the pinky and ring finger. And then we'll do the tendons. So they run all the way to the um, base of the fingers. And you're just going to go back and forth all the way up the tendon. And that tendon uh, runs right along the bone. So if you're right on top of the bone, that's your landmark. Make sure your shoulders are relaxed. I'm just gonna keep reminding you <laughs> as we're giving our, our hands so much needed nurturing and attention. They do so much for us in our day. And uh, it's a good way to give thanks. So I felt a little, just a little thickness on this tendon right here. So I'm just gonna spend a little bit more time there and then go all the way up to the base. And we'll do the um, flexor retinaculum. So remember that flexor retinaculum goes across the wrist. That median nerve travels right underneath it. 
and it attaches, the uh, retinaculum attaches at those bony landmarks. So we're gonna find our thumb joint, and then right below it is a bone that sticks out. So we're gonna work on the thumbs, or sorry, the palm side of that bone going up and down. And this helps to release any um, tightness, abnormal tightness in that ligament. And you can just kind of uh, follow the contour of that bone. Good. And then we'll go to the other side, our pinky side, and you'll find um, a bone sticking out right around here. And you just up and down, following the contour of that bone. And again, just a reminder, if you feel any um, numbness or tingling, just don't spend much time here. Just a little bit will do. Good. And then you can just kind of get a little pumping, squeezing up your fingertips into your wrist. Into your thumb. And then we'll do the nerve flossing on this side. And so you're going to extend your hand and bring your fingers towards you. And then you're going to um, extend and bring your head towards the side. And you're gonna flex, bring your uh, head up and then extend fingers towards the side. We'll do a few more rounds of this. And then if you want a deeper stretch, you can bring your arm uh, towards your back and then continue to bring your fingers down towards the floor and your chin towards your opposite shoulder. So we're creating mobility in that nerve as it travels um, from our neck all the way down to our fingers. And we'll do a couple more. Good. And then go ahead and shake it out. And this little shake is really great if you need to take like a five second break from computer work, just like shake it out. <laughs> Helps to bring blood um, back into our bodies and to our hands. Um, and it's just, it feels so good. And if you feel super inspired to do the shaking, you can do it above your head for like three minutes. And then when you bring your uh, hands back down, it'll feel kind of like vibrating, tingly. It's really fun. Um, <laughs> so we have a little bit of time left. Um, so I'm going to be doing some extra, extra bonus of uh, neck and face. Um, so first, we'll just go ahead and bring our shoulders up towards our ears. And then you're going to inhale. And then with your exhale, drop them down. So you're going to inhale. Drop them down with the exhale. And one more time, inhale. And drop them down with the exhale. Now with all our mobile hands, um, 
you can bring your uh, hands, palms down uh, around your back, the back of your neck. We're gonna be working on the uh, trapezius and you're just gonna cup that muscle and squeeze and then draw your fingers away from the spine down towards your shoulders. So it's gonna be going like this. So again, you're going to um, cup your hands around your trapezius, your neck muscles, your back muscles, squeeze, and then down towards your shoulder. We'll do that one more time. Squeeze and down towards your shoulder. And we'll be doing some neck work. A lot of times um, our necks can do a lot of work. They hold up our heads and a common um, position for people's heads to go into is this, which puts a lot of stress on these muscles here. So we're just going to kind of lengthen and broaden these tissues here along the neck, along the front of the neck. Usually this is good if you do a lot of talking. And then here. Now we're gonna work these muscles that are the underside of the jaw. And so you're going to bring your fingers like this and put the pads of your thumbs underneath your jaw. And the motion is going to be going towards your chin. And you're just moving about a half an inch at a time. So here, get your head in a nice comfortable position and then you're just bringing the pads of your thumbs towards your chin good we'll do that one more time um there's a really fun muscle here it's called the amohyoid and it attaches at your hyoid bone here, and then it actually it goes down, makes like a 90 degree turn and attaches onto one of your shoulder muscles, or sorry, your shoulder blade. So this muscle here, I mean, it's just incredible the way that it kind of attaches around your jaw and then at your shoulder blade. So cool. All right. And then we'll do some jaw work. So you can start here. There's this bone right here called the zygomatic arch. And we're gonna be right below that bone. And you're gonna uh, just kind of half an inch strokes back towards your ears on the um, bottom side of that bone. So we're working that muscle. These muscles do a lot of work as well for chewing our food, talking. And then we'll go down this way in the jaw. We'll go back to that zygomatic arch, that bony landmark, and we'll go towards our ears and we'll go down just a little bit and you'll feel a little indentation. And this area is lined up with our ear hole. And this is where our um, joint, the joint is the temporomandibular joint. And so we'll just do some circles right here right in this joint space. You can kind of feel if one side feels different than the other. And if so, give that side a little extra love.
And then you can open and close your jaw and you can feel the way that your jaw is tracking. And sometimes the jaw will jut out to one side. That's an exaggeration. So if you feel that happening, you can open your mouth. You're gonna put a little bit of pressure upwards. Hold it for about five seconds and then relax. And then you're gonna put a little bit of pressure downwards. So open your mouth slightly. And then the side that it's jutting out to, you're gonna put a little bit of pressure right on that jawline as you open and close your mouth. So I would be putting pressure this way. And that can be a self practice that you do to help reestablish normal gliding of this um, joint. So then just go ahead and put your fingers on that joint again and see, feel if um, anything shifted for you. So what I feel is my uh, right side here was like kind of uh, crunchy and kind of like poppy. And now after doing that, it just, it's smooth. Um, so that's cool. <laughs> um, and then we'll do some eye muscles going around the bottoms of your eyes. You can follow the contour of the bone. So starting at like the, the nose and then going down and up towards the um, temples. And then we'll do the other, the top parts of that. And the forehead. And all the way down. Now you're gonna take your hands, you're gonna put them on your forehead or like cover, cover your eyes. And then you're going to bring your hands all the way back down your head and uh, across your neck. So here again, eyes over your head. <laughs> and your neck. And one more time. And then we'll take the palms of our hands and put them over our eyes. And we'll tap into that slow breath again that we started with. feeling any change of sensations in our body, feeling where we might be a little more relaxed, feeling where our body also might be talking to us saying, hey, I want some attention over here too. Sending love to those places. Feeling gratitude for our bodies and the way that they work in all of their functions. So intricate. Feeling grateful for a healthy body, for a mobile body. Feeling grateful for breath.
And then go ahead and pump uh, the palms of your hands into your eyes a little bit. It's creating a little sensation. And then bring your arms down to a comfortable place and slowly opening up your eyes. Fixing your hair if you need to after our last thing. <laughs> and that's our uh, class for today. If anyone has any questions or comments, now would be a great time to do that. I've I don't never know. Seen, oh, oh God. yeah, I've never seen the cross section of our wrist. So that was super interesting, like how much is going on there and how important it is to take care of it, I guess, you know, like after seeing all that. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Yeah, it's cool to see what the inside of the body looks like and just have different views. It seems so simple, but, and I feel so great. I'm so sad that I don't do that every day. <laughs> you know, we have so many tools and it's, it just, I just feel so much better. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Yeah, it's kind of like, how can we do that in like a five minute little short thing that then we can integrate it into our more of a daily routine and um, yeah, that's kind of one of my goals is how can I keep that going, but not have it be like, it just needs yeah, a, little bit, a little attention. Yeah, and I, I mean like, it's, it's like we have hands and a face and we, we to do all these things, we pick our noses and stuff, but it never occurs to me to just spend like two minutes, you know? It usually has to get pretty bad before I actually put my hands on my own shoulders, but it's great. Yep, feels good. We had a, a baseball or a softball game and I used muscles that I've never used before. And this helped a lot. Like the forearm was aching and now it feels better. All right. That was awesome. Yeah. Just the rest yeah. of the body. Yeah. Yeah. So in the um, portal that you guys have, um, we'll be uploading some videos. So one of them will be uh, the hand one. I also have a foot one we'll be uploading and then one for the face. And I'm trying to keep those around um, five minutes long but it's only one-sided. So, so that could be a good resource um, just to remind, uh, what, what did we do again? Uh, yeah, so I encourage you to check that out. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for the session. Thank you for the videos. Thank you for your time, energy, expertise. This has been awesome. And thank you, Melissa. I didn't know you were gonna show up. Oh, I don't know if you're still there. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you all. Um, and the next uh, the next one is uh, next month. And it is, sorry, I have to navigate. Yeah, it's that, Ruth. Is that Melissa? Yeah, there's yeah, Melissa. I'm, I can't talk much because I'm at the airport, but yes, it's Ruth the next, next month. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Next you month will be a little bit about what you're doing. Yeah, next month it'll be um, how to become a stress reduction powerhouse, and we'll we'll rotate through a different a few different um, tools that will piggyback a little bit on what Maria has been doing and all the rest of the people. And one thing I would say is to be prepared to. Um, you don't need any equipment, but be prepared to stand up where you are. So even if it's just at your desk, we're going to try to mess around with how to get you moving a little bit more just at your desk for a few minutes at a time throughout the day. So I'm really looking forward to it and uh, we'll have some fun playing around with feeling better. Awesome. Thank you. We'll yeah. see you all. See you all next month.
looking forward to it. Awesome. Thank you, Maria. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye.